Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl. I get lots of requests for showing behind the scenes in designing. And today I thought it might be fun to show you how I'm going to crochet a necklace, but instead of designing the necklace first before sitting down to record the video, I'm going to actually design it on the camera. What I am going to do first is show you how to make these little uh, wooden beads into crochet. We start with wooden beads and I'm going to show you how to crochet around the bead. That part I've already done but I'll do an extra one to show you how. And then from there I'm going to show you how to slide beads onto yarn, crochet with beads, and design the whole necklace. So let's get started. The wooden beads come in a variety of sizes. Here's some sizes for example. We're not going to use these two smaller ones today though. I'm going to show you how to crochet around this larger size which depending on whether you're buying it in metric or in standard it would be 25 millimeter or about one inch diameter. And here's a finished one. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to make that next. I'm using Be So Fine yarn, which is a fingering weight bamboo yarn, and I'm using a C2 or 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. We're going to start by tying the yarn in a knot and placing it on our hook. Some people prefer to do a slip knot. I prefer to do a slip knot for knitting, but not for crochet. I prefer a solid knot. And we're going to start with chain four. and we're going to slip stitch into the first chain at the beginning of the round to join in a ring. We're going to chain one and into that ring and if you can't see where the ring is you might want to pull it apart with your nails a little bit. Um, instead of working into any one of those chains you want to work into the center chain four ring. So you insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two and we're going to do that eight times in the ring. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now instead of joining in a round, you would slip stitch to that first stitch here. I'm just going to work in a spiral so we don't have a big beginning and end join on the bead. So in that first stitch at the beginning of our round we're going to work two single crochets. One and two. And you're going to do that all the way around. So there's the first stitch with two and then two single crochets in the second stitch, two single crochets in the third stitch, two in the fourth, two in the fifth, two in the sixth, two in the seventh, and two in the eighth. Okay, so now our circle is growing. Now we're going to work increases as follows in the following row, round. We're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch and one single crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. So, whoops. Two singles and one. Two singles and two. Two singles and three. I count in this way so that I remember my repeat. Two singles and four, two singles and five, two singles and six, two singles and seven, and two singles and eight. Now, depending on whether your gauge is exactly the same as mine or if you're doing the same kind of bead as me or not, I wanted to show you how I had to determine if this was the right size when I made my first one. Obviously I'm designing this so I didn't follow a pattern. So what you want to do if you think you're done with your increases is you want to place it 
on the bead and see if it looks like it's coming up to about the sides. And I feel like if I were to start working even now, I don't feel like we need to go any further to create more width to cover the actual um, diameter of the bead. So what I'm going to do now is work even. And what that means is now that we have um, 24 stitches in our round, what we're going to do is just work even rounds of 24 stitches. And we're going to do three rounds of that. Do one of single crochet. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, whoops, I see the tail got caught there, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, next step is homework. Let's do two more even rounds of 24 stitches and then we'll touch base again. All right, once you've had two more rounds worked even, you're going to see that the sides are going to start pulling up on themselves like a little bowl. At this point, we want to place our bead inside, make sure we're coming along in the right direction, and it looks like we are. We're re we've reached pretty much the top of the sides and if you notice we could actually start doing our decreases now that's how I feel we look at this point we're definitely more than halfway around, halfway up and we've done our uh, straight rows round so now I'm going to decrease down until we get to the other side of the hole so we're going to reverse the, uh, the direction that we did the increases and do the decreases in the opposite direction we're going to decrease two together, which is called a single crochet two together. So you insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's working two stitches at the same time. Single crochet two together, then single crochet in the next stitch, then single crochet two together, then single crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to do that for a total of eight times. So single crochet two together, and single crochet in the next stitch. Pull up a loop in the first stitch, pull up a loop in the second stitch, yarn over, pull through all three. That's single crochet two together, then a regular single crochet. I'm just going to work that all the way around. In other words, doing it eight times. I'm going to count and make sure I have the right amount. Oh, yeah, we're starting with a, a decrease there. Okay, so now you're going to want to work um, double crochet two together in each stitch around. But obviously, if we did this for too long, we aren't going to be able to get our bead inside. So what I suggest is you do the first three stitches, and then we put the bead inside. So we're going to single crochet two together in each stitch around. So it's single crochet two together, and then over the next two stitches, stitches, single crochet, two together, and then on the third one, single crochet, two together, over the next two stitches, and then at this point, what I, we're going to pull our loop up so we don't unravel any stitches, and we're going to insert our bead inside the crochet now. In fact, you know what, let's go, let's back out and snip our beginning tail, get it out of the way. Okay, insert the bead. All right, and now remember we have three stitches done so far. It's a little bit 
weird crocheting around the bead and it's a little bit challenging to get your hook into the stitches sometimes but we can definitely do it. Notice how I stick my hook inside the stitch and then kind of push down and around the bead. It helps me to get in there without having to lift my fingers off of what they're doing to do it. So there's four. And I may have to see and then I'm going to have to lift it up. There we go. Five. Six. <laughs> The tighter it gets, the harder it is to get your hook in there, but that's okay. If you just lift it up away from the bead with your fingers, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Almost. Ah, almost. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to snip the yarn and fasten it off. Now for these last stitches, we're just going to take our needle and you could use a yarn needle. I have a beading needle out because I'm going to use it for the next portion of the project. So either one would work fine. Obviously, um, you could, if you were just doing the beads, you could do this with a yarn needle. But you can't bead beads with a yarn needle, so I'm using the, just one needle tonight. Looks like I may have done more than my eight decreases, but that's all right. Um, ultimately, we're trying to get back to the original chain that we started with on the other end of the bead, so it doesn't matter however many decreases you can get before you cinch all of the stitches together like this is absolutely fine. Okay, so now we just want to weave your ends in a little bit. Okay, now we are ready to start crocheting with the beads and making the necklace. For my necklace, I've chosen to use the purple yarn with these glass beads that are turquoise with a lot of iridescent quality to them that has a lot of purple in them. They're about eight millimeter. Um, Unfortunately, the hole is really small, even though the beauty of the wooden beads is that the hole is so large, working with regular glass beads, now I'm having the issue of having to go back and do things in traditional beading methods, which is why I'm going to use a beading needle. Beading needle is extremely thin, so it can fit easily through the beads, and because it has a really nice wide eye at the top, I'm still going to be able, let's see if I've got that. It's, I'm still going to be able to get through the yarn as well. Now because we're designing as we go, and I don't know the actual stitch numbers, what I'd like to do is um, design from the center out. So what I'm thinking I want to do is do um, a wooden bead, a glass bead, a wooden bead, a glass bead for the five beads that I'm going to do in the front center of the necklace. And then the rest of the necklace I want to just do uh, crochet chain with the glass beads. So if I grab my yarn and make it extremely long, let's. I want the necklace to be wide enough that it can go around my neck without needing a closure on it. I like that style of necklace when I'm using yarn and beads because I just think it's easier. Um, I just think it's easier and it's like if the necklace is metal, I'm okay with the closures, but when it's made with um, softer textures like this, I don't like metal closures on it. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, you can do whatever you like, but for this particular necklace, I want it to just slip over my head. So we're going to weave these on from the center, picturing it from the center. So we're going to start with 
putting the yarn onto the beading needle and we're going to start with one of the large beads. Oh, and I cut my yarn about three feet long just to be on the safe side. I obviously won't need that much, but I thought it would be best if I put everything on and if I have left over, it'd be much easier to uh, just take it right back off. So we're going to just thread all of our stuff on to the needle and the yarn. Okay, so there's what I picture for the center of the necklace. And then I'm going to thread the glass beads onto the ends of this. And I'm going to start with about 20 on each side. I threaded 21 beads on this side, then alternated one of the beads with each of the wooden beads in the middle and then did 21 smaller beads on this side. My yarn is a good three to four inches long, or feet long, just so I have plenty of extra in case I need it. And what I'm gonna do is start by tying a, a knot onto my crochet hook, just like normal. And I'm going to start by crochet chain beading these first 21 beads. And we're going to start with a regular chain one and then a bead chain one. So you're going to slide the bead up right up next to your hook and chain. There's a bead chain one. Then a regular chain one. And I'm going to grab the tail with my pinky just so I can keep it uh, taut while I grab the bead and chain one. Then I'm going to grab the tail again to keep everything even while I do a chain one. Grab a new bead, chain one, and then a chain one without the bead. So we're alternating a bead chain one with a regular chain one. And we're just going to do that till we use up all of these little beads. That's what happens when I let go of my tail. See how it got a little crazy? As soon as I'm hanging on to the tail or the piece itself, it, um, it's easier to get the chain going. Just There's a lot of moving parts when you're beading and crocheting at the same time. But you'll get the hang of it. It's not that hard and it's totally worth it. I love beaded crochet. And the more sparkly, the better, right? <laughs> okay, now our piece is getting long enough that when I grab it with my pinky, I'm grabbing the body of work now, not the tail. Mm, I did it again, see? my. Okay, there we go. You want that bead to be right up next to the hook when you make the chain with the bead, otherwise it will dangle funny and it won't lay smooth like the other ones. You'll, you'd notice if I had done one wrong, they wouldn't lay flat with all the rest of them. Okay, so we'll proceed on to the next one. I'm going to slide our work down. We're getting a little close to the beads now, the bulk of them.
that one really got crazy. I'm not sure I did the right number of chains between these. Let me set it down and make sure everything looks even. I was worried about these ones right here. Nope, it looks like they're fine. Okay, slide our next bead up. bead chain one, and a regular chain one. You've probably got the hang of it now. Okay, so now we're going to pull the wooden bead. I don't like the way that looks, do you? No, what I want to do is slide that bead through. So as, because this is something we're designing as we go, what I'm going to also show you is how you have to re-engineer things. Okay, so first of all, I'm loving how this looks, right? Love how the beads are looking crocheted. But in order to get this bead to just sit there without looking like it's got a crochet stitch on the outside. I'm actually wanting to weave those in. I'm just going to weave those on with a knit needle. So unfortunately, all this other work that we did earlier, I'm going to slide it back out. We'll just have to weave those in again. So we're going to slide them all the way off our yarn. So those are all loose again. We have these on, and what I'm doing is sliding. Actually, we'll take that one off now, too. And we're going to actually fasten off at the end of this stitch. Okay. So what we're going to do for the next few is slide this one through, and then we're going to slide the next glass one through and then crochet that one on. The big wooden bead, a glass bead, a big wooden bead, a glass bead, a wooden bead, wooden glass and the wooden. So now we'll slide those up to where the crochet chain and beads are. Okay, so now we're going to slide those up. Okay, so those ones aren't crocheted at all. This goes from the crochet chain with the beads to the beads just being in the middle. So at this to point, secure these center beads that we don't that we aren't crocheting, I'm going to have end up weaving the yarn through a little bit. So we're going to skip the bead that the yarn's coming out of and go back through the wooden bead and back through the next glass bead. Okay. And then you're going to want to pull that tight. and get it to pull tight with the whole strand of them. OK. 
Okay. And then you're going to skip that glass bead you just worked into, go back through the wooden bead, and back through, well, we'll go back through the wooden bead first, and then we'll go back through the glass bead. And that just snugs up all of those center stitches, so now they're pretty snug. And the beauty of it is that it gives us a thread now to work in so we can start our beginning chain with the crochet hook. Um, but what we're going to do first is weave the rest of our beads on that we're going to need for the rest of the row. So we have our first one here. We're going to thread the, neck, the remaining 20 beads back onto our yarn. So go ahead and do that and we'll touch base again. Okay, I've got all those beads thread back onto the needle or onto the yarn, and now we're going to pick up our yarn from around that thread that's in the last stitch that's secured on there, and we're going to chain one, and now we're going to bead chain one. So slide our next bead up. Now make sure your hook's facing down. There's a beginner. Reminder, <laughs> chain one, and then a bead chain one. And chain one. And a bead chain one. And now we have a different part of the necklace to hang on to. So we're going to, uh, instead of grabbing with our pinky, it's a little too cumbersome for that. So I'm just like grabbing onto one of the beads as I slide up the next glass bead. And we're just doing the same thing we did on the other side of the wooden beads, and that's a bead chain one and a chain one. <laughs> Almost. Here we go. I'm starting to worry that our necklace isn't going to be long enough. And all that means is that I probably didn't add the right number of beads and chains to the beginning of the necklace, but that's okay. That's why I kept our yarn extra long in case we need to add more. So we'll figure that out when we get to the end of this portion. Again, that's why I'm showing you how I designed this necklace rather than just showing you how to do it because I figure you're going to want to make some of these creative differences in your necklaces so showing you how I make decisions as I'm crocheting and beading I think is really important too. Like for example just in choosing the color of the beads my first reaction would be to either pick a contrast color for the bead compared to the yarn the yarn beads or pick you know monotone same color but I thought it was really an interesting combination to pick up on the iridescent quality of these beads so normally I wouldn't put green and purple together necessarily although now that I'm seeing them together I absolutely love this combination but it was because I picked up on the light purple shiny aspect of the iridescent and I thought it matched the purple in the yarn really well. <laughs> the 
yarn doesn't want to cooperate, you just got to breathe through it. Having a little patience goes a long way, right? Okay, and we're down to our last one. All right, so we've got the majority of our necklace complete. I'm going to wrap it around my head now and see if we're close. And I'm about a few inches away. What I think I might do is just crochet for the rest. Okay, so I crocheted this one till I ran out of space on the yarn and I have a little bit left on this side. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch at the beginning and I'm just going to crochet, crochet it right out until I run out of yarn. There we go. So now we have our two short ends and I'm going to take my needle again and I may even grab a yarn needle this time just to get a good grasp of things. Oh boy, check this out. As I was fiddling around and trying to figure out what kind of knot to do on the yarn, I broke my tails off. And what a perfect opportunity to show you how to fix a disaster. I really don't want to get rid of this necklace. I think it's super cute the way it is. Do not want to have to destroy this whole thing. So I'm trying to figure out how to salvage this. And what I'm going to do is take a yarn needle now. Forget the beading needle. We need a little more serious tool for surgery and I'm going to pull my yarn through. I have, a I have a piece about 18 inches long right now and I'm going to insert my hook into the knot of the first side and I'm going to insert my hook into the knot or the first chain whatever of the second side and so now I have two really long tails and what I can do is tie these together really nice and secure. And I'm just going to knot it a few times. But the beauty of this is that once I do this, I'm going to weave those ends in really, really secure. Okay, so we've got a good number of knots. We don't need this tail anymore since it's obviously not helping anything. And I'm going to take my yarn needle, actually we'll go back to the beading needle for this side because, side because the yarn needle will not weave through the beads and in order to weave our loose ends through we're going to actually go through the beads as well just to get it nice and secure. So we'll just go through stitch. And bead. and stitch and bead then you just want to do that a couple sides a couple repeats in the one direction and then we'll come back up through and go in the opposite direction so we wove through two beads that way we'll come back up going in the opposite direction. I always think it's important when you're weaving in ends, regardless of your project, is to work in multiple directions. It makes the yarn that much less likely of coming out. And we'll change directions one more time. And that ought to be good. So we'll cut that one. And then we'll do the other side the same, only this side doesn't have beads right at the very beginning of the tail. So I'm going to go with the yarn needle since it's just a little bit easier to work with. And we'll just weave through a few stitches in one direction. Going back to color choices, I think it would be really interesting to not only play on 
monotone, picking yarn and beads that go well together in the same color family. I think also doing contrast colors from the color wheel would be very interesting, say like purple and gold be looking really pretty together. Um, but another thing that I think would be really pretty is if you went with gold plated beads to pick jewel tones. I think that would be really pretty also. I'm thinking of doing red yarn with gold beads next. Maybe for a bracelet, maybe for another necklace, I'm not sure. And there's our necklace. I hope you enjoyed making a necklace with me tonight, actually designing it as we go and seeing that there are lots of mistakes that get made along the way in the design process, but a mistake is just an opportunity to learn from it. So here now is the real uh, question, does it still fit over my head? <laughs> Would have been easier without my glasses, but oh well. And voila, it fits. <laughs>